six people were arrested. Forty of those arrested came from the Wolverhampton area. John Helm reports now on what should have been a day to remember with pleasure for the fans of Scarborough. Some Wolves fans had travelled overnight to make sure of their places in the queue. 15,000 programmes bound to become collector's items had been printed. And two hours before the kick-off, the gates were opened. I hope it's a great day for Scarborough. It should be a great day for football. It's, uh, I know that teams have come into the league, Wimbledon and whatever, through a different uh, means as to uh, Scarborough have. And I hope it's going to be a great day for everybody and trouble free. Well, this is my very first football match as well. We're on holiday. But my husband supports Wolves, so... Worked out well for you, then. Very lucky. This was a day that meant so much to so many people who've worked tirelessly to get it right for Scarborough. The town's never seen anything like it before. It's great for everybody, but a lot of work. I mean, I've been here when the crowd was so small, the change ends at half-time. So it's a great day. It's a fantastic day. I'm looking forward to it. This must be the greatest day of your life, Neil, isn't it? It's uh, close, yeah. I think it will be at 3 o'clock. <laughs> This was the greatest day. Very proud, obviously. Uh, at present, everybody's behaving themselves. The Wolf fans seem very happy. I hope it finishes like this, actually, at 20 to 5, and everybody descends away from Scarborough after having an enjoyable afternoon. Ironically, within seconds of that interview, a Wolves fan who'd climbed onto the roof of a stand fell 25 feet and had to be given the kiss of life. Amazingly, he later discharged himself from hospital having suffered no more than bruising. The game itself got off to a dream start for Scarborough. Taken by Paul Kendall and uh, Ernie Moss at the edge of the area and Mel, Stuart Mel scores the first goal! Scarborough in league football! It was so simple in the end Kendall's free kick, headed down by Ernie Moss, and Stuart Mell takes the glory and creates a little bit of history as well. An historic moment indeed, but strangely the league's new boys then paid for their inexperience. They allowed Wolves back into the game, Steve Bull scoring an excellent individual goal. Soon afterwards, another dreadful defensive mix-up lets in fullback Steve Stout for Wolves' second goal. The start to the second half was delayed for 10 minutes, though as both managers pleaded with the rival factions to behave and help clear debris which had been thrown at the police. Despite several warnings, these fans refused to come down, running the risk of more serious injuries. Considerable damage was caused to the ground. It was a tragedy these events should prove so distracting from an excellent game, and Scarborough fully deserved their first league point. Thompson's had plenty of practice at taking corners and throw-ins in this match, and he lifts another one forward, away once more to McHale, who blasts it in! What a magnificent goal by Ray McHale! I struck it well, it went in the bo bottom corner, but I don't think it was no more than what we deserved. It didn't warrant losers on the pitch. Uh, the game of football won today. No mind what anybody else reports, the game of football was, was very, very good today and I think that's the pleasing thing from my point of view. And I think at Scarborough, we're in for a, a, an entertaining season at home. Two happy men, but for Chairman Terry Wood, the day had been ruined. I think they're a set of animals. You saw it yourself, you tell me. You don't, you don't need me to tell you. I mean, look at the gates, what's that more? At that end, is diabolical. Any club that's going to receive love this season, ban them and make sure your ground remains the same after the game as what it was before it.